Hi, welcome to the BSP Software Podcast channel. My name is Andrew Weiss, and today we're going to go through how to set up the IBM Cognos Audit Database. We're working on a new product here that integrates some of its data from the Audit Database, and it seemed like a good opportunity to record this as a podcast for everybody. Uh, first, I want to uh, give some credit to a blog that we had found, uh, bievolution.blogspot.com. I don't know whose blog this is, and it looks like there's only one posting out here, but it was very helpful for us to get the Audit Database up and running quickly. So I have Cognos 10 installed, and we're going to start off in our web apps, uh, P2PD directory. Drill down into WebInf Glasses. First step we need to do is create a folder structure here and uh, compile a servlet called DS Servlet. So let's go ahead and do that. Create a folder called COM. Inside that folder, create a folder called Cognos. And inside that folder, create a folder called Demo. This folder structure is very important. So you'll see we have P2PD, WebInf, Classes, COM, Cognos, Demo. Underneath your Web Apps directory is an audit folder with three files in it. Simply copy those into the demo folder. This DS servlet is the servlet that needs to be executed for uh, some of the audit database reporting to work properly. And that way the uh, package can get information live out of the Cognos content store. But we need to make some changes to this first. Uh, it's a Java file. It's code. Don't be scared. It's not all that crazy. It's going to be a very simple modification, uh, but we do need to build it and compile this code. So right click and edit this. Notepad will do just fine. And if you scroll down just a little bit into the do get method, what you'll see, uh, if you care to understand it, is Cognos is creating an instance of the report service. They're going to perform a log on to the report service, and then they're going to query for all of the reports uh, for the search path. And that's that way the package will have this information. Uh, first, you'll notice that the logon method is commented out. That's what the double forward slash is. We want to remove that because we're going to need to provide a logon here. It's commented out probably because uh, they intend for you to use this with anonymous access in a demo environment, uh, but in a live environment, we really do need to log on. And then they've externalized the username, password, and namespace uh, as member variables, so we don't have to really get into too much code. Uh, so my username is Ari, and Ari does not have a password my namespace and be careful this is the namespace ID not the namespace name so if the ID and name are different make sure you get the right one uh, so mine is local and the endpoint I'm running on the standard port 9300 the default uh, so there should be no changes there unless you've changed your default port alright go ahead and save this file and close it and then we're going to use the build.bat file to run this uh, or to compile it we have to modify the build.bat file first uh, by default, there's two lines at the top. It says, where is your Java JDK? Not a JRE. We need a JDK, which is a Java Development Kit. That's where the compiler is. You can download that from Oracle. Um, and JDK 1.5 or 1.6 will do just fine. And then where's your Cognos installation? All right. So I've installed my JDK uh, into my program files into a folder called Java. So let me adjust these two lines. And you'll see there's my JDK and then my CRN home. I love it that they still call it CRN, uh, but my Cognos 10 home is in IBM Cognos C10. The rest of this file should be just fine. I like to throw a pause at the bottom of bat files. And that way, when I'm done running it, I can see that there was no errors, or if there were, I could read them before the window disappears. Uh, so if you want to make that change, go right ahead, save the file, close it, and then go ahead and run it. And we'll get this notification out here that just reminds us that we have to edit the file. We did edit the file, so we should be okay. And no errors came out to the screen, and we have a new file called dsservlet.class. The next step we have is to modify the Cognos web.xml file to make this servlet available through uh, a URL interface. So I can go into a browser and type in a URL and execute this. To do that, we're going to go back up to the web apps directory and go into p2bd webinf and open the web.xml file. Before doing that, go ahead and copy and paste this file and save a backup as I've done down here. Uh, if you make a mistake in this file or if it's not well formed, Cognos won't start and you're going to need to get back to that backup. Okay, so simply open that file in Notepad or an XML editor if you prefer. And we're going to drop in a new servlet mapping at the bottom of the file. You can see in this file there's a lot of servlets and servlet mappings, and that's the mapping of what's a URL that a user types in a browser, uh, and how does that execute a Java class. Back out on that blog, we can see that the information 
to put in this file is notated right here. But this is the servlet mapping that we're going to have to type in either by hand or copy and paste uh, to the bottom of the file. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few extra lines just above the closing web app node and below the last servlet mapping and we'll drop in our new servlet mapping. Alright, let's go ahead and save this. Okay, the next step we're going to make before we start Cognos Backup is to uh, actually set up the um, audit database itself and then tell Cognos that it exists. So out in SQL Server, and you can use Oracle if you'd like, uh, I'm going to create a new database and I'll just call it Audit. And then I'll go ahead and secure that database with my uh, Cognos logon. And we'll just give him DB owner access. Great, so now I have a database uh, audit, and it doesn't have any tables in it just yet, uh, but we also have a, a connection string that we can access this database. So we're going to head over to Cognos Configuration, and underneath the logging node, so under Environment Logging, we're going to create a new resource, a destination. We'll just call it Audit, and it's of type Database. And then beneath that, we need to actually create the connection to the database. So we're going to right click and say another new resource database. I'll call that audit again. And here's where you can see your different database types. So DB2, Oracle, SQL Server. And we're going to connect to SQL Server. My database is at localhost 1433 and the username and password is Cognos Cognos. In addition, the name of my database is audit. So once I have that all set up, I right click and test this and make sure I've got a good connection, and I do. Great, so let's save our configuration and then we'll start up Cognos. Okay, excellent. So let's start up Cognos. And while that's starting up, we're going to go ahead and set up some data sources and import some samples for the, the audit package. Uh, in your C10 directory, underneath web content, there should be a samples folder if you installed the samples. Inside samples is a content folder, and in there you'll find the IBM Cognos Audit Zip. Uh, I think it has a slightly different name in Cognos 8.4. I think it was just called audit.zip. So go ahead and copy that and paste that into the Cognos deployment folder. That way we'll be able to import this uh, deployment into Cognos. Okay, now that my Cognos environment is started back up, we can go ahead and head into Cognos to... Um, set up our data source connections and import our samples. Just a quick check in our audit database uh, when we had created it didn't have any tables but now you'll see Cognos has recognized there's an audit database out there successfully connected and created the database. So let's go ahead and log in to our Cognos environment. The first thing we're going to do is set up some data source connections so we're going to head right on out to the administer IBM Cognos. And then on the configuration data source connections tab, we're going to create a new data source. We'll call this audit. I believe the name of this is pretty important because it ties to the name that's going to be in the packages. So we'll call it audit. And then we'll make this a SQL Server connection. And my database is on the local machine. It's called audit. I also have to set up a username and password, which we remember is Cognos Cognos. We'll test that connection just to make sure that we haven't made any mistakes. And we have a successful connection. Okay, great. So let's save this database connection. And now we need to set up our second connection. Now this second data source that we're going to set up is going to be an XML data source. And it's going to point to that DS servlet that we created. So let's test that DS servlet real quick just to make sure that it's functioning properly. We certainly don't want it uh, coming back with an error. So we'll go to localhost port 9300 slash p2pd slash cognos slash ds servlet dot jsp and the casing on that is case sensitive. So go ahead and hit enter and your uh, data set XML should load up. It should look just like this where you've got data with a bunch of rows and search paths to reports that exist in your cognos environment. Now, in testing this, I was getting some errors, um, and I had paused the screen for a little while to resolve the error, and I think what I had done wrong is uh, when I was creating these fo folders, uh, I made com uppercase. Uh, so I had to go back in, change it to lowercase, and restart my Cognos environment, uh, and then it was uh, started working properly. So I made a mistake early on there, and I think that corrected the mistake.
So we can see that this URL is returning the data that we want. So let's copy that URL and we're going to go off and make that, that new data source now. URL underscore XML. And again, the name of that is referenced in the model and in the report. So we want to make sure that it's the same URL underscore XML. We'll choose type XML for the data source, uh, for the type. And the connection string is going to be that URL. Go ahead and hit finish and we should be done setting up our connections. Okay, only about two more steps to go here. We need to import our samples. We need to tell Cognos to start auditing and what to audit into the audit log. Uh, and then we should be complete and we can go ahead and give it a try and see if it works. So let's head over to content administration. We're going to create a new import. And the import is that IBM Cognos audit zip file we stuck in that deployment package. And we're going to go ahead and make sure you check the box to import this and import all of the content. and run now. Okay, that was an easy one. And our final step before we should be up and running is to go ahead and tell Cognos what to audit. To do this, we're going to go to the Status System tab, and we're going to go to our Dispatcher. And on our Dispatcher, we choose Set Properties. Here we go. So it's Set Properties right on the Dispatcher. And then on the Settings tab, we're going to go through all of the logging entries in here, which they're all by default set to minimal, and change them all to request. So I've already done most of them here, but here's a few of them that I had not done. Uh, make sure you check this box. By default, it's not checked. Audit the native query for a batch report service. Verify that all of the uh, logging entries are set. Make sure you go to the next page to check if there are any logging um, options on this page as well. So when you're complete, go ahead and hit OK. And now Cognos is set up that when uh, uh, logons and reports and re jobs are executing that they should enter into our uh, audit database. So let's go ahead and let's give it a try. I'm going to go ahead and log off. And then I'm going to log back on as Ari. And just a quick check, we'll go right into the database. You can see the tables in here. There's only a handful, and they're pretty self-explanatory. So if I go to the user logon table, I should see some details being populated. And here we go. There's some logons that have been populated in here already, quite a few, actually. OK, let's go back into Cognos and try some of the reports. I've performed a few logons and a few uh, report executions, so we should have a, a handful of rows of data in here. If we drill into our samples models audit package, we can see there's a, about 25 or so uh, stock reports, canned reports that come with the audit package. They're all pretty good. If you take a look at the logon operations by username, we should be able to see some information. Here's a handful of users that have logged on to the environment. So let's audit all of them. See our anonymous user, our Eric u or our user. And then Eric came in and he logged on. Um, and some not available. And then here's Vince. So we see when he logged on and when he logged off. Uh, a second report I'll show, and that'll be the last one, which is the uh, execute reports by user. I think this is a good one. We can select our prompts here. We'll just select all users for all packages. So we can report on just a single package or a single report. But let's get everything. And we could see that Ari's run uh, a bunch of reports from the audit package and from the Go Sales and Retailers package. And Vince ran a few from the, the Go Sales and Retailers package. And we can also see the execution time of those reports in here. That sums up the podcast. If the uh, audit package and the audit reports have been a mystery to you, hopefully this explains some of it. And uh, if setting it up has ever been uh, a little bit of a mystery as well, hopefully this step-by-step -step guide has helped you get through that. And good luck with the audit package. And thanks for watching our podcast. Have a good day.